Hi everyone. Um, this is my very first tutorial and today I'm going to be making a lantern and so I'm going to be using the Can Company um, pattern pack. It's Halloween and I'm using this pattern right here. So to get started you're going to need your Big Shot as well as the um, Sizzix Bigs Clear Large Scallop Square Die. And this is from Stampin' Up! <clears throat> and you're going to need some orange cardstock. This is pumpkin pie. And you'll need five pieces of orange cardstock and you're going to cut out five scallop squares. So I'm just cutting those out with my Big Shot. And the nice thing about these is you can just push them out like that. So here are the five pieces that you'll need. Um, four of them are going to be the sides, and so you're going to need to score four at a half inch on three different sides. So I'm using my Martha Stewart scoreboard, and as you can see, I'm scoring at a half inch on three sides. And you're going to do this again with four of those pieces. <coughs> and then you're folding them, and then you're going to take your scissors, and um, where the scores meet on both bottom corners, you're going to cut off those teeny little tabs on the um, corners. So do that on both sides. And then again, do that on all four pieces. Then you're going to get your um, fifth uh, square, and you are uh, this is going to be the bottom, and you're going to score on all the edges. You're going to score it a half inch again on all four sides and this is just to kind of create a guideline to, to where you're going to cut your corners and again cut all four corners out. This is the bottom so you're only going to do this one this way. So there are all four corners cut out and then you're going to need four pieces of designer paper cut at three and three eighths by three and three eighths and this is going to go on um, the sides and you're going to then glue it, um, line it up with the bottom score line and the side score lines on the, the, on the four um, <clears throat> side pieces, the pieces that you cut scored three times and not the bottom. So then you should have four sides. Then what you're going to do is you're going to get um, a circle nestability and I think I'm using like two and seven eighths, something like that. And you're going to run that through two different sides. It doesn't matter which two sides, just make sure you're not using the bottom. And you're going to, um, I ran it through twice because it's two <clears throat> pieces that you're cutting through and it should work. So as you can see, there's a circle. And then you're going to need two pieces of vellum at three and a quarter by three and a quarter. And you're going to stamp on those two pieces of vellum. So I am using a stamp set by Inka Dinka Do. I don't remember what it's called. But it's a spider web and then also the spider, and I'm stamping it with Versamark. <clears throat> and this is a tricky part because it's hard to stamp on vellum. So I'm just laying the vellum on top of the stamp, and I am um, pressing down on the vellum so I can get that ink all over. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, yeah, then you're going to take it off and look at it. I'm taking it off and it looks pretty good to me. There's a little bit of a mess up, but that's okay. Um, and then I'm going to emboss it with white embossing powder. I just keep my embossing powder in these containers. I'm going to sprinkle that embossing powder all over my Versamark. Make sure I'm getting that spider web covered. Now I'm tapping it off so that I don't have any extra on there. And then what something that I like to do is I like to get a paintbrush and um, wipe off any places where I don't want um, Versamark or the embossing powder. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm just wiping off that extra embossing powder and I'm just going to leave that little spot there for an extra detail. And then I'm using my heat tool to heat it up and I skipped an hour stamping the spider. Um, and I'm going to just go ahead and stamp it somewhere on the spider web. I'm going to figure out where I want it. So I'm putting that over there and deciding where exactly I want that spider web, that spider to go on the web. And then again, I'm going to emboss that with black embossing powder. <clears throat> oh, I did stamp the spider in um, black Versacolor ink. That stuff stays wet a long time. So again, I'm tapping it off 
and I'm going to take my paintbrush and wipe off the extra embossing powder. A lot of times it sticks to the previously embossed areas, so I'm making sure I don't have black on my web. Alright, so now I'm going to get my heat tool and I'm going to heat that guy up. It shouldn't take too long. And now I'm adding um, adhesive to the front of my image because I am going to be gluing it to the back of the sides where I cut the holes. So here you can see me adhering it down to um, one of the sides and I'm looking at it, making sure it's why I like <clears throat> how I like it. Now I'm going to take um, two nestabilities and these are the same size as the one I cut plus the little bit bigger size. And I'm going to cut a circle that goes around the edge of the circle. And this is just an optional thing. You don't have to do this. I just like the look of it. So I'm running that through my big shot and then taking the smaller one and putting that um, lining that up with the edge as you can see here and I'm pretty sure this is the 3 inch and the 2 and 7 eighths inch circle nestability so just running those through <clears throat> and now you can see I have a nice little ring that's going to go around the edge of my circle now I'm just using my Tombow multi-glue and I am going to glue it that way. And I got way too much glue. <laughs> so you don't have to use near this much. I did have to go back and um, wipe up some of the extra glue. As you can see I have way too much. So yeah I'm just gonna skip that part and show you how it works, how it should look, and there I have both sides. So now you should have two sides that look exactly like that, and then you have two of the other sides as well. So there you have your front and your back. Now I'm just um, gluing all of the scallops together, making sure that the vellum uh, is opposite the other side, if that makes sense. Oops, and that one popped off, so I'm going to have to re-glue it back on, but that's no big deal. And usually I would use sticky strip, but I had run out when I made this video, so I'm just using regular adhesive, and it actually seems to be holding just fine. So now I'm gluing all of my sides and my bottom together, and it should look like that. Now I have two, my handle, um, and the cardstock is one, no, one inch, and then the top layer is... Uh, three-fourths of an inch and they are both um, eight inches eight and a half inches long and now I'm just I glued them down to the edges and now I'm putting a brad to hold them to hold the handle on securely so I'm just using two different brads and now I'm just wanting to add a cute little bow um, to both sides of the handle so that's what I'm doing, and I fiddled a lot. Oh, and there's my daughter's hand. <laughs> she was sitting on my lap during this part. So there is the finished box with um, the cute little bows on both sides. And now all I have to do is add the little tea light. So I just use a little tea light candle. You could probably use um, a different size candle, but I like that the tea light has its own little container. So you just center it down there, and then this, um, now this is what it looks like, and it's not very dark, so you can hardly tell that it's lit, but I promise you, at nighttime, it's really cool looking. So yeah, there's the lit candle, and then I wanted to add, um, something special, make it like a little gift box, so I added, put some candy corn in a little cellophane bag and tied it with ribbon, so that it was also a gift box, um, and it had a little bit of a extra purpose. So there's the finished little bag. I'm putting it in the box um, along with the tea light candle and it's the perfect gift to give to someone for Halloween. 
and I just really love how it turned out. Um, so yeah, there's the finished box, and I hope you enjoy. So go ahead and feel free to make one, and let me know if you do, and I would love to see it. So thanks for watching. Bye.